Hey guys, it's Putty for the Rustified Official Servers here with a quick look at Electricity and Rust. Electricity brings a vast number of opportunities to the game, but for this video we'll be looking at the basics so any Newman can understand. This is just a reminder that this system could be subject to change in the future. We'll be starting off by going over all the different bits and pieces that you'll be seeing. Electrical items in game can be broken down into four different categories, the first one being power generation and storage. There is only two sources of power in game right now, windmills and solar panels. Both of these items work well with small and large rechargeable batteries, so I strongly encourage you to use batteries where applicable. Side note, there may be other ways to make power in the future, so make sure you check out future dev blogs. The second category is standard switches. First off, you have your typical switch that manually toggles power on and off. Then there is the pressure pad that works in a similar fashion, but requires someone to stand on it to pass power through. Next up is the laser detector. This activates when a player crosses its beam. And finally, the timer, where a player can set amount of time that they want the power to go through when the device is activated. This device also has a remote toggle port on the side, where you can remotely set off the timer. The third category is logical components, and this is where things can get a little complicated. First off, we have an AND switch, a component that will allow power to pass through only if both inputs on the switch receive power. Next up is the blocker. It will block power that's going through it if it receives current in its blocked power output. Next is the counter. The counter can display power received or can count up or down and allow pass-through when it hits a certain target. The memory cell is a 1-bit storage component that can allow or block power to pass through it based on its state. You also have control over what state produces power. The exclusive switch allows power to pass through if only one input receives power. If both inputs receive power, it will block all power passing through. And finally, the OR switch will allow power to pass through if either input receives power. The last category is miscellaneous, and here you'll find things like the wire tool that is used to connect electrical components together and is crafted with high quality metal. Next up is the door controller. When power is received to this device, it will open up a door, and when power is lost, the door will close. The electrical branch will split power into two outputs. One output is customizable. The root combiner combines two power sources into a single output. This is useful for connecting low energy batteries or solar panels together. The splitter equally distributes power among three outputs. And lastly, lights. The ceiling light that used to run off low grade fuel now runs off of power. Here are the basics of connecting cables. Place down any component you wish to use like any other deployable. If you place down a component you don't like, you can always pick it up with the hammer tool. To connect your components, you will need to use the wire tool. With the wire tool equipped, you can hover over a component to see all the different connection spots. Each spot is labeled. Once you find where you want to connect, use the left mouse button and click. Then click on the next connection spot on the component you wish to connect to. You can organize your cables by clicking on walls and floors but you can only do this 16 times. Also, you can only run your wire so far. The longer you run your wire, the more power it uses. If you are unhappy with your connection, you can hold the right mouse button on the connection point to remove it. Cables also have the ability to go through walls. Just click on one side of a wall or floor, and then click on the other side to pass it through. Now that you know the basics of running cables, here's how to generate electricity. As mentioned before, there is only two ways to generate electricity, the windmill and the solar panels. Solar panels require direct sunlight to be fully efficient. Windmills run 24 seven, but their output can vary based on wind intensity. And they also require a greater footprint to be placed. Both these forms of power generation have a finite amount of power output per unit. So, if your project has too many components, or the cable run between two objects is too great, you'll have to add more sources of power. One way of dealing with this is chaining power outputs together. This can be done with the root combiner. 
Here's an example of a very simple circuit using solar panels. This circuit uses two solar panels that feed into a root combiner that combines their power output and then puts it into a rechargeable battery. The battery's output then feeds to a light switch that can then toggle on and off a ceiling lamp. The downside of the simple circuit is that you have to have the light turned off for the battery to be charging. Overall, these are very simple designs that could be improved upon. For the best experience learning electricity in Rust, it's best to play around with the components. This has been a not so quick look at electricity in Rust. I'm Putty and thanks for watching. If you want to know more about this update or any other update, head on over to rustified.com and don't forget to check us out on the Rustified official servers.